Hello, I'm JW. This time it's earthing once again, and this time it's going to be a certain problem which can occur on TN CS supplies when you install things like hot tubs or swimming pools outside. And it's another reason why you don't want to use a TN CS earth for something like a hot tub or swimming pool. Unfortunately, as we saw in a previous episode, that may in fact be inevitable because there isn't much in the way you can do in certainly many uh, densely packed urban areas due to the distances between uh, Earth's properties and the underground services. But uh, faults on that uh, combined neutron earth connector are not the only problem. There is another one which can actually occur at any time, and in fact could in fact be there all of the time. So when is an Earth not the same as another Earth? And the answer is when it's a TNCS supply, and this is because of voltage drop. Now I've just drawn in a normal uh, supply, so I have our transformer over there. And at some point there it's going to have a connection to the true earth itself, that's going to be at the transformer, some sort of earth electrode there, wherever the transformer happens to be, and of course that will be in the general mass of earth like that, which of course extends uh, pretty much everywhere. Now from that transformer you're going to have at least two wires, so we're going to have the uh, neutral from the transformer, and of course the line. Now at your installation you are going to have an earth conductor, if that was a TNS supply, as in separate, then that earth conductor would actually go all the way back to the point at the transformer there. And this particular conductor doesn't carry any current in normal use, so no current flowing, there can't be any voltage drop on this conductor, so this is always going to be at the same potential as the true earth itself, simply because it's connected with that metallic connection there. This could be hundreds of metres away in transformer, but it's just a uh, copper or other metal conductor there, so nothing wrong with that. However, the difference on a TNCS supply is that this doesn't connect here, this basically doesn't exist, and instead what you've got is a connection at the point it enters the property, and it's actually part of the neutral. So now, if you've connected some a piece of equipment in here, between the line and neutral, some current is going to flow here, doesn't really matter what that is, but uh, because current is flowing in these wires, there's going to be some sort of voltage drop. Now the traditional view is that if this was 230 volts over here, and then this is zero, that's what you get at the item over there. But of course in reality it's not like that, because that assumes that the wires have zero resistance, and all the voltage is across the load, but that's not very realistic. So more likely is that the wires are going to have some resistance in them, and therefore some voltage drop in the wiring. So you might still have 230 here, so there's a 2 volt drop in that wire there, that means at this end you would actually only have 228 volts. But of course it also applies on the neutral because it's the same uh, principle applies, it's just the other conductor. So if you've got a 2 volt drop there, then yeah, you're going to have a 2 volt drop here as well. So that's going to still be zero, but then this, at this point here, becomes 2 volts. So then the voltage between the points of your installation is basically this minus that, so that would be 226, so you'd have 226 volts across the wires here. But crucially, this 2 volt here is now 2 volts difference between the true earth itself and the earth terminal of your installation. And because you've got a 2 volt difference there, if you connected a wire between here and another earth electro, then some current would flow between those two points. And this is why on the TNCS system, the actual earth terminal you're going to get quite often is not at exactly the same potential or same voltage as the mass of earth, because this of course has some voltage drop in it, and if the load in the installation is larger, the voltage drop here and here is larger, and therefore the difference between the true earth and the earth terminal also gets larger as well. Now if you're inside the building it doesn't actually matter because the only thing you're going to be in contact with is the earth terminal and of course any metallic items are going to be connected to this either via the circuit protective conductors or main bonding from these to say gas water pipes and whatever else so not a problem there but as soon as you go outside for say something like a hot tub if you're standing on the ground here as you generally would be in a hot tub situation then uh, you're standing on the ground here the hot tub, of course, is going to have some sort of heating element connected through to the supply, including the earthing terminal. And then for if you actually touch this particular earth terminal or something connected to it, then there's going to be two volts, in this case, between your feet here and whatever you're touching. 
Now two volts isn't a lot, but again this is just an example. It could be larger than that, particularly if you're standing next to a hot tub and you're wet and everything else on the ground is also wet. That current flowing through your body could be detected. Probably not going to kill anybody, but on the other hand it's still something which is going to be fairly unpleasant. Now these figures here are just made up, so let's have a look at a uh, more likely sort of installation, the sort of figures that you could actually get in reality. Now let's look at a fairly worst case scenario for this, which is not entirely implausible. So we've got our supply here from the transformer, that's some distance away down the street or wherever else, and we've got it supplying three houses here, all from the same cable. In reality there could be a lot more than this, but three is what happens to fit here. So we've got house one, two and three. All the same connections there, just the line neutral and then the earth derived from the neutral conductor. And let's say that in these particular houses there's a moderate amount of load going on. Let's say it was 30 amps per house, so we've got 30 amps here, 30 amps in there, and 30 amps in there as well. Not a particularly excessive amount, it could be say a fairly cheapo low-end electric shower. Someone's turned the cooker on, it hasn't heated up yet, or electric vehicle charger, or various combinations of all kinds of stuff. Now in this bit of the cable we can have 30 amps. This one we can have 60 because of course it's supplying two of the properties, and in this part here we're going to have 90 because of course that's supplying all three. So we've got 90 amps going on here, 60 amps here, and 30 amps over there. And of course that's in both conductors, it's going in coming out, and obviously going back the other way because it's AC. Now let's consider the situation at house number 3, which is furthest from the transformer, and therefore we'll have the largest uh, voltage drop along the cable. Now the TNCS supply, the typical loop impedance here, is supposed to be in the region of 0.35 ohms or less. Let's say that it was 0.35 ohms here because it's at the end of the line and all that. 0.35 is where you measure between the line and the earth conductor, but of course in this case the earth and the neutral are the same conductor, so if you measure between the two it'd also be 0.35 ohms. And that basically means that this cabling here, back through the transformer and back this way, is going to be in the region of 0.35 ohms. Let's say that the transformer itself was 0.05. That means that the cabling itself would be 0.3. And to make this especially easy, and you can see why I've done this particular arrangement, let's say that the cable itself was 0.1 ohms here, another 0.1 ohms there, and unsurprisingly another 0.1 ohms over here. And of course in reality it's going to be far more complex than that. So all we've got there is 30 amps each per fixture there, three presumably identical bits of cable, 0.1 ohms each, adding up to 0.3 in total, and transformer say 0.05, which we don't really need to be concerned with. Now we can work out the voltage drop on these sections fairly easily because voltage here is going to be current times resistance. So 90 amps here times 0.1 ohms is going to be 9 volts. And again here it's 60 times 0.1 so it's going to be a 6 volt drop there. And 30 times 0.1 is 3 volts over there. Now we'll assume the transformer has a voltage here say of 250 volts. And that's fairly common because of course it's going to be lower by the time it gets to the house at the end of the road, so you wouldn't want to start here with say 230 because it'd be too low when it got over there. So what voltage do we get in each house? Well house number one is going to be 250 minus the 9 volt drop in the conductors here. We're going to ignore this short bit to the house for the moment because it just uh, gets in the way otherwise. So this house would have a voltage of around 241, 250 minus 9. This one is only going to get around 235, which is basically 241 minus 6, or in fact 250 minus 9 plus 6. This house here is only going to get 232 volts, because again we're taking off that extra 3 volts that we had there. So with this house here we've actually lost 18 volts in the actual conductors that supply the property. And that's going to be shared between the two, so it's going to be 9 here and 9 over there. So that means that the earth connection here is going to be 9 volts different between the actual earth itself. So comparing with the earth connection from the cable and the actual earth as in the ground outside that you would be standing on next to your hot tub or swimming pool, 
Now 9 volts doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, if you don't think 9 volts is a lot, then get a 9 volt battery and lick it, as on the terminals, and then you'll see that 9 volts is quite capable of providing a certain amount of sensations. So uh, not necessarily what want to be happening when you're standing outside all wet and dripping with 9 volts between some part of your body and some other part. TNCS supplies can have undesirable effects for things like hot tubs, even when there isn't a fault with the system, just due to the voltage drop in the cables, and then this derived earth connection here becoming a different voltage or potential compared to the actual earth outside. So that's another problem with TNCS. If you use it outside, of course, there's going to be that difference in voltage between the earth itself and the earth connection from the installation. And TNCS really is the worst earthing system you can possibly get. Now, of course, the other option will be for a hot tub to make it a TT installation. But as we saw in a previous video, that's not exactly straightforward either, because then you've got those issues of putting the electrode 10 metres or more away from other items. And you've still got the problems then of having other extraneous parts involved. So again, not necessarily straightforward, but uh, nevertheless there are options there. Now there isn't really a single option for any of this stuff, it's really down to the individual installation, but in any case it's going to require a certain amount of careful consideration to establish what the best option in fact is. But that is it for this video, until next time, thanks for watching.